You have to view your calling as holy. Treat your calling as holy. At the same time, many of you are the other way. You're focused more on your own weakness and your unholiness, and you feel you're not worthy. You can't serve in ministry because you're not worthy because of this sin and that sin and this, this failing and this weakness. But the fact is, nobody, none of us are worthy. In ourselves, none of us are adequate. Paul said our adequacy comes from him. So here, you're, I'm not worthy of my calling in myself, and you're not worthy of your calling in yourself. But God doesn't call those who are worthy or those who are able. He enables those whom he has called. Amen. He doesn't even call the holy. He makes them holy. And that's key in this verse. Some of your Bibles might read, you shall hallow them, consecrate them, hallow them. But the word in Hebrew is the word kadash. Try it. Kadosh. Now, this is a word you've heard it, you've heard things like it. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. It can be a noun, an adjective, holy, kadosh. But this is not a noun. It's not an adjective. This is a verb. This is holy in the Bible. This is the holy as a verb. It's an action. So it says, you shall kadosh them. You will, what, you can translate, you shall holify them. You shall holyize them. You know, that they were not worthy, but you become worthy because they weren't worthy. They have to be made holy. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. I don't know one example in the Bible where someone's called of God and they, and they I've called it and they say, sure, it was, it's me. I'm, I'm more than, I'm overqualified. Of course, of course, I, they don't. That's not it. When he called the prophets, the reaction was, I'm not worthy. The reaction of Moses, I'm not worthy. The reaction of, of, of Jeremiah, not worthy. What makes you adequate is the fact that you know you're not adequate without God, but with God is your adequacy. Amen. And also, kadash, to make holy, also means cleansed. In 1 Corinthians, it says, it says this, 1 Corinthians 6, it says, some of you were sexually immoral, immoral. some of you were drunkards, addiction, addicted, adulterers, idolaters, greedy, abusers, dishonest, homosexual, but you were washed you were sanctified. In other words, we're all in the same boat. We're all sinners, but he kadashed us. Amen. It's not about being holy, it's about becoming holy. And, 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 and by the way, if I just read this verse in Canada, by that law, that verse is illegal. But it doesn't matter. We're not in Canada. And even if we were in Canada, it's not about Canada, it's about God. God has the power to cleanse us and change us and make us free no matter who we are. Now the priests were separated on that day. They were given special clothes linked to it. So, so this is what's happening here. If they're going to fulfill their calling, they're going to minister, they have to be separated to God and separated. Now, when we think of separation, we think of separation from. I'm separated from. And yes, that's true. He separated them. First of all, he separated Israel from the world. Then he separated the Le tribe of Levi from Israel. Then he separated the priests from the Levites. Then he separated the high priests from the priests. So it's separation. So yes, you have to be so to fulfill your calling, you have to be separate. You have to separate from that which is not your calling. You can't do that which is not your calling and fulfill your calling at the same time. You're doing two different things that are in conflict. But it's not only separate from, it's separate to. So we sometimes I think, okay, separation, holiness is I don't do this, I don't do that. But it's separate to what are you doing? Not just what are you not doing, what are you doing? You separate from this, I'm not doing this anymore, so I can do this. That's the goal. The very first world mission in history began with the Spirit of God speaking to the congregation and saying, separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the purpose I have called them to. Began with separation. Began with that. God makes holy, but then we have to move in it. We have to do as it leads us. The vessels of the temple were all consecrated. They were hallowed. They were dedicated to God. The, the, the bowls, you know, the, the incense, uh, the, the altars, all that was consecrated, dedicated to God. The priest dedicated it. But you are a vessel, the Bible says. So how do, who's going to dedicate you? You don't have parents here to dedicate you. And even then, it's all, the altar... How, well, you know, a, a bowl cannot dedicate itself. You can dedicate yourself. You're a vessel with a will, so you can dedicate yourself. And the more you dedicate yourself to God's purpose, the more you become a dedicated, consecrated vessel of God. So it's up to you in that sense. 
as you will dedicate. That means separate. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Aaron and his sons prepared themselves to be used of God. You also need to prepare yourself. Some people say, you know, I just, I, I, my calling is to do this, 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 this. Well, yeah, but that may not be right now. You know, I was called to do a lot of things, but I couldn't do it right then. I actually waited for a long time, I, but I didn't just sit around waiting. I waited on God for what He had, but I ministered anyway. I did what, it, you know, you know, I was asked to lead a Bible study. I was, I was ministering to the homeless. I would do whatever I could. Be faithful in little, and you'll be faithful in much. Don't be saying, I have to do this, this, this. God will use you. God, God has, a, has a great commission. He need, he's calling for help. Help him out. God will honor you as you're faithful. And you may be something you're to do to prepare too that might be hindering you. You know, you already may, may know it in the Spirit. Moses had to circumcise his kids. He was in disobedience with God. Still called though, God's gracious, called Moses, but he was in disobedience. But he had to take care of what he had to do. He didn't do it. The army of Israel had to get rid of its, its spoils, unclean spoils, to enter to win the next ba battle. Gideon had to take down the altar of Baal in his father's backyard in order to be used of God to fulfill his calling. So maybe something you need to do, God's calling you. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons, verse 4 it says, I'm going to that, to the doorway of the tent of meeting and cleanse them with water. Water. They weren't perfect, but they were cleansed. The priests had to be washed on that first day. They couldn't enter that calling without being washed. So the prophet Isaiah, when he was called, he, he, he sees God and God is amazing. He sees the holiness and he says, woe is me. I'm unclean. He knew what he did. He sinned. He could have sinned that morning. I'm unclean. And yet God called him. He said, I'm unclean. I can't. And then God cleanses him. And then he says, God says, whom shall I send? And Isaiah says, me, send me. He went, from, he went from condemnation and guilt and shame and, and himself, himself, and he went to send me, God. I'm focusing on your cleansing. I'm not focused on, my, on me. I'm focusing on your power. Send me. God did it. God will do it. God will do it in your life, but you have to go with it. You got to go with it. You know, and you know that, that verse, if anyone will cleanse himself from these base things or these vulgar, base, low purposes, he will be used as a vessel of honor. And, and, and the principle is in your house, if, you have, if you're going to do some mopping up, you don't use your good china to put the mop water in there. And if you put mop water, you cannot, you cannot lift it up as a vessel of honor. So if you have mop water in, you have unclean, 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 that's, that's hindering you from being used for what you're called to. Get rid of the mop water and then you can be used as a vessel of honor. Get rid of the low purposes, you'll be used for the high purposes. Get rid of the distracting purposes, you'll be used for the focus. So the prophet Isaiah, when he was called, he, he, he sees God and God is amazing. He sees the holiness and he says, woe is me. I'm unclean. He knew what he did. He sinned. He could have sinned that morning. I'm unclean. And yet God called him. He said, I'm unclean. I can't. And then God cleanses him. And then he says, God says, whom shall I send? And Isaiah says, me, send me. He went from, he went from condemnation and guilt and shame and, and himself, himself, and he went to send me, God. I'm focusing on your cleansing. I'm not focused on, my, on me. I'm focusing on your power. Send me. God did it. God will do it. God will do it in your life, but you have to go with it. You got to go with it. You know, and you know that, that verse, if anyone will cleanse himself from these base things or these vulgar, base, low purposes, he will be used as a vessel of honor. And, and, and the principle is in your house, if, you have, if you're going to do some mopping up, you don't use your good china to put the mop water in there. And if you put mop water, you cannot, you cannot lift it up as a vessel of honor. So if you have mop water and you have unclean, 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 that's, that's hindering you from being used for what you're called to. Get rid of the mop water, and then you can be used as a vessel of honor. Get rid of the low purposes, you'll be used for the high purposes. Get rid of the distracting purposes, you'll be used for the focus purposes. Now what else did the priest have to do? Now I spoke when I shared, I believe what I shared a while back on, on Friday about the McNace. I mentioned this, but I, what happened to me in my life, I'm going to mention it here. During when I was waiting on the Lord for the ministry, my calling... God had called me. 
I was still, as I said, ministering. And it, it was a day that I was starting a ministry to the homeless in New York City to give them food and give them, and to give the word. And as we go out, and one of the people who was with me had been to a thrift shop. And she found a lithograph on it that was more than 100 years old. She gave it to me that day, not because she planned it to give it that day. She just happened to be with me, and she happened to have it in her car. And it just, but it turned out it was the very beginning of ministry. And it was an image from, from the 18, 1800s of Aram, the priest, ministering with the incense in the holy place. And there were words in, on the bottom in Hebrew, and it read, around, right around this section, You shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and for his sons, that they may minister to me, or that they may be priests to me. Now I was totally struck because of what it meant to me. And here it was a word on ministry. And the word for ministry or priest in Hebrew was C-H-N for where we, I get my last name. And so it's there. And I've kept this image to this day in my office. I've never shown it except for the first service. Do you want to see it? That's the image that was given to me on that day. On the bottom you'll see Hebrew. That is the image that was given. And the Lord gave it to me on the first day of the ministry, and it's about the first day of the ministry in Aaron and his sons. And that day, it's about, you should put on, you give them holy garments. And I, that day I was wearing a spring jacket that I just bought at a thrift store that turned out to be the same thrift store where she got that. First day I was, first day I was wearing it. And the jacket had on it the word Levi's. Now, and it was about the garment. The scripture was about the garment so they could minister. And I'm wearing this. And so, God, again, God was saying, listen, you're going to fulfill your call. I've got a calling. You could only fulfill it in Messiah. You could never have gone even near your calling. Messiah is the only, not just about me. Every one of you, you have a specific calling. Each one has a different calling from someone else. I mean, there are things that are the same, that we are united in that. But there's different specific, just like parts of the body. All different, yet... Each one of us has the same way to fulfill it. And that is through Messiah, we become who we are. We become who we're meant to be. But to wear the sacred garments, they had to do the cleansing first. And, and it's very simple. You have, you're, going out, you're going out for something. You have, great you have your best clothes you want to put on. Well, you know, if you're dirty, you've been working, you don't put them on. You first clean yourself. Or else you'll, you'll, you'll make dirty the thing. It won't, it won't fit. Your calling in God is so high that you want to be cleansed so you can receive the garment, the mantle of your calling. The garment represents your calling. And so, and so you want to deal with the other thing. Get rid of, the more you can get rid of the stuff, the more you can wear your mantle. It says, Exodus 29 says this, Take the garments, dress Aaron with a tunic, the robe of the ephod, ephod the, the breast piece, fasten the ephod around him, by a skillfully woven waistband. It says skillfully woven. These are holy, sacred garments, as holy as the tabernacle itself. You don't want to mess it up. Your calling is as holy as anything God has made. You don't want to mess it up. I was once talking to Dr. Dobson, and, and I was saying, you know, look at what God has done and all that. And he says, yeah. He says, he says, I don't want to mess it up. I'm afraid to. And I'm the same way, too. I mean, with a calling, people say, oh, you don't get a big head. I said, it's the opposite. I don't want to mess it up. I'm, it's, it's above me. It, it's like, whoa, Lord. I'm not. As a young believer, I was given a book. It spoke about warnings for a believer, like, like pastors. Believers. It said, beware of temptation. Beware of, of, of temptation of sexual immorality, be careful with women, the whole thing, protect yourself. The booklet was written by Jimmy Swagger. When I was getting my ministry license years later, I remember that the moment I was handed the ministry license by the church there, someone said, oh, by the way, did you hear the news? Jimmy Swagger fell. Same moment, same moment, same moment. And I took it as God saying, be careful. I don't care what you have, nobody is above temptation. Nobody, you know, there but for the grace of God go I. So many be believers, many believers in ministry have stained their garments and they can't use the garment anymore. We must all take our calling so seriously and it's not just the outright sins. It's the attitudes. People come into God's house and into ministry with the old attitudes that are not clean. 
In other words, all you're going to do is stay in your garment. In other words, you cannot be coming to ministry and you're gossiping. You're staining the garment. You come into ministry and you're jealous of this one and this one. You're staining the garment. Fill of self-pity. You're bitter. You're staining the garment. Amen. The words, the priests had such a high calling, they couldn't have anything in their life that was not consistent. Now I'm going to share something with you that happened to me on the way back from ministering last week. I was ministering around the country um, and this happened. So, and you'll enjoy it because it's embarrassing on, at my expense. <laughs> and, but let me just say also, you know, it's like the enemy is looking for anything that's not consistent. The enemy wants to mess you up. He wants to trip you up. He'll use anything he can, even appearances. He'll use what he can. Now this wasn't a thing that I did something wrong, but it's something that shows the principle. I'm in... Chicago. I'm in O'Hare Airport getting ready to go back to New Jersey. The flight was delayed and I'm there, you know, in this section with all the people waiting to go. And I had to, I figured, let, let me do something. Let me do some research. And I was doing the book and doing, you know, I said, well, I can't. My computer d what, had no Wi-Fi. So I said, but my phone, I can get something. Maybe let me try it. I didn't usually do that. I said, let me try Siri. And if this Siri could help me. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> I said, I said, Hi, Siri, I was looking for some research on some Nazi uniforms having to do with, with what I had to do. So I said, Siri, so all of a sudden, Siri doesn't say it, shouts it out. It was full volume. Full volume says, looking for Nazi uniforms. <laughs> Everybody looks up. And they have shock, disgust looking at me. And, and I'm like, okay, no, no, and, and, then, and then, and then, and then it goes off a second time. Are you still looking for Nazi uniforms? And I'm trying to suffocate it. I'm trying to put the thing, I'm stuffing it in, and it's not working. I'm stuffing it in. They're all looking, and the people all around me were a group of Mormons. And they were heading to Israel. And they're looking at who's this Nazi in our midst. And a guy is craw craw he's looking at me with his guy's giving me this look. And I say, I said, it's not what it looks like. And finally I said, I'm not a Nazi. Now, there's, now other people looking up. Who's, who said a Nazi? He's a Nazi. That guy over there. Don't and, and, and finally, and the guy's still not, not believing it. They're not believing it. I said, no. I said, I'm doing research. It's, I'm writing a book. You know, the guy said, oh, you write books. I said, yeah, what book? I said, The Harbinger is one. He said, the harbinger. He says, I, I have the harbinger. He said, I have, I have the power and I have the... I said, you're Jonathan Kahn? I said, yeah. He said, I can't believe it. Because I never knew he was a Nazi sympathizer, but that's... I'm never... When we get back to Salt Lake City, we burn the books, you know. But... Now, that, now that was innocent, but it shows you the anything that is not consistent in your calling, the enemy is going to try to use it. He's going to try to bring disrepute to God. The two sons of Aaron burned a strange fire to God, remember? They were struck down. You know, so in the New Testament. They, they, they said they were giving everything and they didn't. They held back and they were struck. The greater your calling, the higher the standard, the more you need to purify yourself. Get everything in order. The priest, you get everything where you can be transparent. For anything that's not consistent with your calling, get it out. Don't let your, but on the other hand, don't let your sins disqualify your calling, your mantle. Let your mantle, your calling, disqualify your sins. Transform you. Make you who you are. In other words, instead of saying, oh, I'm not worthy to be that, get on the other side of it. You know, I'm going with a calling and, I'm, and this is not worthy anymore of my life. Now think about it. The priest to put on the new garment, he had to take off an old garment. I remember as a kid, I hated getting up for school. And I wanted to sleep as late as I could. So one day I had this idea. I'll get dressed the night before with all my clothes and I'll put my pajamas over it. Then in the morning I just open it up and I go, I sleep late. Well, it worked maybe one time, the second time my parents got wise to it. But the garments God gave you, you know, in the same way, you can't, you can't use the old to minister in the new. You see, the, 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 what he's saying, you can't, you, you got saying to the priest, you can't use your clothes, your, your old clothes to minister in my temple. You need this clothes. You need this to go. So with your calling. So with your calling. You cannot bring the old into the new. It won't work. The garment that God has given you, it doesn't fit you. 
It, it's above you. It's big. It's a, it's, its size is bigger. You know, when you were young and you got clothes and they were always bigger so you could grow into it. You as parents know it. But so you can look at your calling and you can say, it's too much. I'm not worthy of it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fit for the job. I'm not. And don't get discouraged. It's supposed to be like that. That's the point. You're never up to your calling. You're ne I'm not up to my calling. You're not up to your calling. In myself. But it's meant to be that way. You see the theme again and again. Moses saying, no, I can't speak. Isaiah, I'm unclean. Jeremiah, I'm too young. Gideon was the weakest of them. Peter, I'm, I'm unworthy, Lord. That's the point. You see, you don't, ha you don't fit the clothes. You just put them on. And you grow into it. You don't want a mantle, a garment, a calling that fits you. Because if it fits you, if it's the same size, you got nowhere to go. You got nowhere to grow. You want a calling that's above where you are now so you can get there, so you can grow. That's why Paul could write, walk in a manner worthy of the high calling God has given you. Not that you are walking in it, but walk now in the high calling. It's above you. You don't want to be pulling the, the, the calling down. You want to let the calling to pull you up. And it wasn't just the cleansing, the clothing. There was something else. That day, there was the anointing. Then you shall take, verse 7, the oil of anointing and pour it on his head and anoint him. This was not Presbyterian rubbing here going on. You know, once, once when we were new believers, we went to a, camp, a tent camp revival meeting. It was in New Jersey, but it was like from the, from the south, you know, old school. And the guy at the end says, it's going to be an anointing service. He says, okay, let's go. And we went. And I don't know, it wasn't like a nice little thing here. We're on this like assembly line. We come across, and the guy, they must have gone to the supermarket and gotten tons of Wesson oil. And the, the guy takes it and slaps it all over us. And we're <laughs> dripping. We can barely even see. We, we, we go, what happened? We're like in another dimension, you know. Well, that's kind of what it says, like, like the oil dripping down the beard of Adam. That was dripping. There's a lot of oil. So there's the, the clo there's the cleansing, the clothing, and then the anointing. The anointing. You cannot fulfill that mantle without the oil of the Spirit. You know, your cleansing leads to the clothing, and the clothing has to be anointed. You have to be anointed. You cannot fulfill your calling without God's Spirit. What did Messiah tell his people at the beginning of their calling? The apostles, he said, wait in Jerusalem. Why? so you can be clothed on high with power. Here they are. Again, notice the same. Notice how consistent the Bible is. Here is the beginning of the Great Commission, beginning of the New Testament of ministry, the beginning of going out. And what happens? They wait and they get anointed, just like the priest did on their first day. You see, the Spirit of God does the will of God. See, if you do something, your spirit does the will. What you want, it's your spirit is doing it. God's Spirit does the will of God. So that's why you want to do, you know, the thing is I want to do God's will, but I get the Spirit. The Spirit of God will do the will. I will put my Spirit within them and I will cause them to walk in my ways. The Spirit will with you will do the will of God. So the Spirit, the anointing is to do the will of God. To be able to do what you couldn't do without the anointing. The anointing will allow you to do it. I can do all things. The anointing allows me to do that. 